It's a wonderful, beautiful morning here at the White River State Park, and we are excited to be here. This is our first morning waking up here on this year's camp, and it's just a wonderful place to be. We absolutely love it here. The birds have been out here looking for their breakfast, chirping in the trees, and that's been great. I've already got up there, and uh, we cooked us some bacon, some eggs, baked us some biscuits in a little oven right there. We've had us a, uh, so we've had a nice breakfast, been a wonderful morning, getting ready to start getting things prepped for today's big barbecue. So uh, Abby's parents are gonna be here today, as well as their friends who we were hanging with last year, uh, all the folks that are coming in to do the fishing trip. And today we're gonna be doing the big barbecue here at the camp. So I have our 10 pound prime rib roast that's inside the Kodiak now on the counter. Uh, when I got it this morning about six o'clock, I went ahead and pulled it out, uh, lightly salted it, and it's gonna rest there on the counter and start warming up a little bit. And then probably right around noon, I'm gonna be getting it out here. We're gonna get it seasoned well, and we're gonna put it in the pit barrel there to start its smoke. I imagine it's gonna take somewhere around four hours, give or take a little bit. And when we get it out here, I will uh, show you what I'm gonna do to uh, season it and uh, get it on the cook. So we're gonna be doing the prime rib roast. We're gonna be doing a pot full of uh, camp oven veggies. We're gonna be doing some baked potatoes and I'm planning on making a homemade peach cobbler. And I think uh, Abby's mom is making baked beans to go with that as well. So it's gonna be a fun day here. We've got the fire pit right over there. I wanna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna get a fire going so that we can have a fire all day today because it actually is cold out here and Whenever I got up, it was, I don't know, I think it was like 36 degrees whenever we got up. So it is a little chilly, but it feels great. It's wonderful. Skies are nice and blue. We've been seeing um, cardinals, blue jays, robins, and woodpeckers so far, as well as some hawks and uh, some herring out there on the river. So it's a great place for nature, especially if you love birds. It's just uh, absolutely beautiful here and pretty. So it's the start of a wonderful day. We're gonna have a great barbecue. I hope I pull everything off and everybody's happy with the meal. I love my little camp uh, kitchen setup. It's working out great. I bring you guys back when we start uh, getting our prime rib roast ready for the pit barrel. It has been cold this morning. It was in the 30s whenever we got it made breakfast. I'm gonna get a fire going. Have this rolling all day long. The uh, bait shop, they sell firewood here, so we got plenty if we burn through that. I'm getting the pit barrel prepped and ready to, uh, we'll light this guy off in about an hour and a half, but I thought I'd show you my charcoal method that I've been uh, working with for a little while. So I made this, this is a piece of tubing that I had at the shop, and then I cut and welded a piece of flat bar to it to create a divider. And what, what this is, is kind of like what they consider the snake method. And I'll scoop out, you can see my smoke wood, that's, that's what I'm going to use. I'll scoop out like this first quarter section of the ring, put that in the, uh, the chimney, light those off, and I'll dump them back right here. And what you're doing is that you're kind of controlling the rate of how much charcoal is burning, and so it burns around this way. Lasts a little bit longer, and it keeps the heat down instead of having the entire basket lit and burning you have a little bit more control over the heat by doing it this way. And then we just lay the, this is pecan wood, lay that on there, that provides the smoke that you need. So this has been working really well for me and that's how we're gonna be cooking our prime rib roast today in the pit barrel. We're getting our veggies prepped. It's gonna go into the, uh, the big 12 inch lodge camp oven later. It's gonna be, that's onions underneath there, broccoli, cauliflower. We're also gonna mix some garlic in that. We'll toss it in some oil. I'm gonna use some of my all-purpose uh, rub on these as well, and we'll bake those in the, uh, the big camp oven. All right, we've got our, our briquettes are hot. All right. And move this piece of wood to right about there. All right, I'll take my, this is uh, a hanging or a hook tool that I made myself in the shop. Oh, I'm gonna put this piece right about there. All right, I think that'll work right there. I just leave the center open like that. And we will pick this up. 
It always works good for me. I just use a welding glove and you're far enough away that that heat is not gonna hurt you right there. Just try to get it nice and centered in the barrel and that is it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the grate in here. We're not gonna hang it. We're actually, I always like to put my roast right on the grate. Put the lid on and let the grate start getting hot. I'm gonna bring the roast out here and start getting it prepped with the rub. All right, guys, there it is. That is a 10 pound prime grade rib roast from the butcher shop. Had them fritch the bones, cut and tie it so that the uh, ribs will be separate once we're done cooking. The white spot you see, that's actually the kosher salt that I put on there this morning about six o'clock. So it's been um, kind of brining with the salt out on the uh, counter in the camper for about six hours. It's uh, right about 11.45 right now. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna just use some olive oil. We're gonna rub it completely down with olive oil and I'm gonna use the pit barrel beef and game rub on the roast. That turns out really good. And then uh, we'll set it on there in about 15 minutes or so. I've got a probe that I'll stick to the center so that we can uh, gauge the temperature. And I'm gonna be shooting for probably around 125 internal. Once we hit that, we'll take it out. I'm gonna wrap it up good and we will set it in this cooler here so that it can rest for a while until it is time to carve later on the day. So that's our prime rib roast seasoned up, coated down with the olive oil and then use the uh, pit barrel beef and game rub. It really is a good rub. It, it's uh, just very delicious on uh, beef. So I enjoy using it sometimes. So it's about ready to go. I'm gonna give the pit about another five minutes or so, scrape the grates or brush them anyway and then we'll put our rib roast on. We just set it on. I got this, the uh, probe inserted to the center of the roast there. We're using our little blue dot and it's showing that the internal is at 36 degrees. So we're ready to uh, put the lid on the pit barrel, let this thing cook, probably expecting around a four hour, give or take a little bit, but approximately four hours on this cook. Looking forward to it. So this is gonna be some lunchtime snacking right here, just a little pack of chicken wings. Abby picked these up for me at the Harps just a little bit ago in uh, Bull Shoals. I'm gonna just set these right on the pit barrel since we got that going and just put a little olive oil on it and then use the uh, Heath Ryle Sweet Barbecue Rub. Whenever we were up in Montana and also Colorado, we stopped at a couple of um, hardware stores, I call them, called Murdoch's Ranch and Home Supply. And that's where I found these guys right here, these crocodile cloths. I picked them up and I keep them in the truck and I kind of use them sparingly uh, for camping and other things whenever you're around the truck and you just need to wipe your hands off. But I actually really like these things. So they're a nice big oversized cloth, 10 by 15. They're wet and you can degrease with them. You can just clean your hands, wipe, you know, wipe the tables down or anything you need. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there that these things work really good. So the crocodile cloth, and that's where I got them was for Murdoch's. I have not seen them anywhere else in any stores besides Murdoch's. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this uh, homemade peach cobbler prepped. We're gonna get it cooked, get it done a little bit ahead of time. And I do have a video dedicated to this recipe on the channel. I believe I called it Mom's Homemade Peach Cobbler. It's also known as the Cuppa 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 Peach Cobbler Recipe. And the reason why they call it that is because you use one cup of sugar. This is just normal white sugar. One cup of milk, one cup of self-rising flour. And then two additional things that I put in here is I like a little cinnamon with mine and I like a little bit of vanilla mixed in there as well, but you don't have to have these to go in there. Peaches, you can use fresh if you want, but the way we do this uh, recipe, use one full can of the Del Monte peaches with syrup, all right? That's everything that goes into the recipe. We're gonna be using a large 10 inch camp oven and I have greased it with Crisco shortening. So we're gonna start putting this together now. We'll do our one cup of sugar and I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, flour now. The weather could not be more perfect than it is right now. Agreed. I feel like after we leave here, that is gonna be the end of this year's cool weather. I know. It's sad, isn't it? It is sad. I like it when it's nice and cool. I'm going to do this out here just because it's going to make a mess. We've got our one cup of self-rising flour. All right, we're going to put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of the cinnamon. Just 
sprinkle all that in there. I don't measure it. I just kind of gauge it, but something like that right there. Probably a half to one teaspoon is going to be good enough. Oh, it smells so good. It smells good, don't it? And I'll sprinkle a little bit on top there as well. Or one cup of milk. And it's going to mix that up good. This is going to make your batter. It is delicious. Simple and delicious. It's very simple, very easy. There's a lot of ways you can do this. This is just, this is the way that my mom did it right here. Now I'm going to take the vanilla. I'm not going to measure this either, but you don't need much. And I can't get it to break loose. And <laughs> cut. And cut. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Probably about a half a teaspoon worth of uh, vanilla. Just like that right there. That might have been a little more than a half a teaspoon, but it's no big deal. Just makes it delicious. We've got our camp oven greased. We're gonna go ahead and pour the batter in. All right, so there's our batter. Now, take the peaches, pour everything in there, okay? Including the syrup. What is it? What is what? I like it when you say peaches. It's the peaches. <laughs> I guess I say it different. You say it ador in an adorable way. I just say what it's called, it's peaches. It is peaches. Okay. Okay. Take this and the way mom told me, is like don't mix it all up, but you just wanna kinda of take it and she says swirl it. What I'm trying to do is just even out the peaches a little bit. Cut through it a little bit, just kind of mix it in a little bit. And that is probably gonna be good, just like that. All right, now, I usually take a little bit more cinnamon and just kind of dust the top of it. Let's see if I can do this without making a huge mess. Come on, here we go. Dust the top of it. I think you nailed it. Yep, that worked good. Now we're ready to bake. I'm gonna use uh, six briquettes on the bottom, 14 on the top. This will take a good hour to cook. Could take a little bit longer if it's in a windy condition because of the wind blowing across the coals, but it's gonna be about an hour to cook this. Let's do it. Let's get our peach cobbler cooking. I got six briquettes down there. Dump the rest out on top. Spread them out around the outer rim there. And that'll work nicely. Always put a few extras. This usually happens. Some of those will usually break like that. And I'll just put those around the outside of it. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna put those two right there. Mm -hmm. Let's just put some of these around the outside right here to kind of help create a little extra heat. And we got right, we got the bottom is right around that bottom radius of the pot. Not too far in there. We're gonna go ahead, we're actually doing two desserts today. Abby does not care for fruit desserts. She likes fruit, she just don't like fruit cooked desserts. I know. Like pies. We're gonna and get a cobblers. lot of comments. I'm sorry, everybody. Well, yeah, everybody likes what they like. So, the the book, the cookbook that I talked about, that you buy here at the White River, the Dutch Oven Cookbook. There's a lot of really great recipes in Don't there. Don't forget to start your timer. So, oh yeah, let me hit the timer. I'm gonna hit start. Mm -hmm. So there's another one in here. There's three in here that do not include fruits. One of them is a Mississippi mud cake. So we're gonna make that. If it has the word cake in it, I want it. It's cake. Mississippi, it's got mud in it. I mean, <laughs> so I'll yellow cake it. mix, cocoa powder, <laughs> sugar, water, vanilla, cinnamon, chocolate chips, pecans. That's powdered sugar, we don't have powdered sugar, but you don't have to have that. No. So that's gonna be a delicious cake. So we're gonna have peach cobbler for the fruit people, cake for Abby. <laughs> Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Did I throw a fit? So, I might have. She's like, I just don't like the fruit in there. I'm like, all right, tell you what, let's make a cake. But I wanted to try it because there's a ton of really good recipes in this book. I want to yes. try them all. Let's try them all. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna prep that cake next and uh, get that cooking as well. All right, so you started with uh, 
the classic yellow. Yeah, I'm just mixing Duncan the cake Hines. up. Uh, so it's the cake mix, eggs, and oil. And then we'll move on to the rest of the recipe there. The mud. Yep. I've never made this. This is a new one for me. We do not have a mixture, a fancy mixture, so we're just going to be mixing it by hand. It's okay, no shame. This is good. Yeah, it'll be good. A lot of these cake recipes and cobbler recipes, you don't mix anything. You just, it's like dump cake. You'll put your fruit in there and then you'll just um, dump the cake on top with whatever liquid it says, butter, and it works out. I think the 12 inch is a little bit big for this. It says use a 12. I know it's gonna, you know, rise and everything, but I think the 10 probably would have been a better choice for this one. So we're mixing up the mud, which is the cocoa, brown sugar, hot water, vanilla, and cinnamon. We also have, we're gonna be using pecans as well. Mm, it smells really good. You like that? Yeah, I do. I'm going to use that. I, I was thinking that was going to be a little thicker. We'll use the whisk. Mix it up good here. We're going to pour the mud on. Ooh. Ooh. It's All right. Pretty. So maybe the 12 inch was the, <laughs> was the right yeah. choice here. I forgot about how much the, the mud was going to make. And then, so the recipe just says five minutes before it's done to top it with the chocolate chips and the pecans. Going on with the Mississippi mud cake. I like it when that much cake is in a... Uh... Yes, you do. <laughs> Same thing, we're just going to line the top. I put eight on the bottom, the top should be around... 17. I can't remember if I, I might have been thinking about the 10 inch when I did this. It looks like I got enough. That's why you put extra ones in there. Yes, I always, I usually always put about an extra four because like this right here, these guys are crumbling up. So I just move them off out of the way and put the whole one right up in there, just like that. This isn't super critical. You don't have to pick at it like I do here. Makes me feel a little better when I get them even like that. Like it's square to the world to you? Yes, like it's square to the world, exactly. It's a nice, <laughs> even. Other people don't use the same methods I do, but this is what works for me. It's what I like. Well, it works. It does so work. Keep, so keep going. It cooks every time, guaranteed. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hit the timer yep. and get that one going. Let's check out our uh, peach cobbler. has been going for 31 minutes. Let's take a look at it. And I'll rotate it, get these two 90 degrees out. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. See that? Yeah. That's where it's at right there. Oh, that cinnamon on the top. Ooh, it smells zee. so good. All right. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're definitely going to have some good desserts. Let's go ahead and take a look at our roast. Okay. Yeah. So we are at, we're at 93 degrees internal and we've been cooking two and a half hours now. Oh. Yep. Oh, I can see the juice is coming out by that bone. It was yeah. a beautiful piece of meat, isn't it? That is going to be a good eating right there. All right. Keep the heat in there. All right, so we only got one dish left that we're gonna be putting on. I need to start the potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. We've got the little convection oven for baked potatoes. And then we're gonna be making a, a big 12 inch uh, cast iron pot there full of vegetables. Yay, veggies. Veggies, yay, veggies. We love those too. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna mix up the veggies here, our onions, broccoli, cauliflower with some oil and some all purpose seasoning. We're gonna do that, throw it in the 12-inch uh, the deep camp oven, get these ready to bake in a little while. Those are gonna be good. That's it right there. I love veggies. Yep. All right, guys, so we're getting uh, real close on our cook here. We're at 123 internal, so that's gonna be real close to uh, pull. I'm gonna pull at 125. And then over here, we've got some vegetables cooking. We've got one pot that's uh, non-seasoned. We, uh, we have a guest that um, is sensitive to certain seasoning so we've got one this butter salt and pepper this one's full of other vegetables we have our cake right here let's take a look at that this is going to be our 
Mississippi mud cake right there. And over here, we've got our peach cobbler. I missed that one. There's our peach oh. cobbler right there. All right, and then we have baked potatoes in the oven right here. I think that's gonna be it. I agree. So we should be pulling the roast here real soon. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull our roast. We're uh, temping out at 125, so I think it's gonna be good to go. First thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna pull that probe out right there. All right, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. There it is. Look at that. Looking good. That's our probe. We're gonna turn that guy off. It looks great. We're gonna wrap this guy up. We're gonna put it in that cooler there and uh, let her rest while we finish out our other yeah. cooks. <laughs> All right, Bob, how about you uh, lay that towel, just kind of spread it out, and we're going to wrap it up in that, too, when I set it down in there. Yeah, just lay her across. Yeah, there you go, just like that, right there. Look at that. Perfect. Oh, yeah. See that? Yeah. A little thermal blanket. Perfect. We're going to let that guy rest. Good to go. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> All right, what you got going, babe? All right, so we're getting the little Weber here hot. We're going to be grilling our fillets. We got the fillets right there. Just a simple salt and pepper on those. We're going to put the grill grates on here and let it get good and hot. We're going to grill our steaks, and then we're going to be ready to eat. All right, we're getting down to our final stretch. Uh, we've got here's the fillets right here. Those are uh, prime fillets from the butcher shop. We've got them salt and pepper only and some olive oil. Yes. We're gonna use a little Weber here with our grill grates. All right. So apparently everybody here likes rare to medium rare, so we should be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Those are gonna be delicious. Thanks for cooking, baby. You're welcome. This is a, this, this is tricky. This you one's know? elaborate. When, yeah. Yeah. Especially when everybody gets here and everybody's excited yeah. and, and they want to you know, talk, and... talk and tell stories. I, I love it all. But when you're the cook and you're trying to time everything and make sure it's it gets a little tricky. Well, this tonight so, you can relax. Everybody showed up a little early. They did, but at least everyone. <laughs> That's why here. I was trying to get it all cooked too. You did right. You did right. Yeah. So we're, we're making it. We're almost done. All right, let me see. Try to get a hot spot of the grill. <laughs> Just flip it over and turn it to the same place. Yeah. Pick that one up. <laughs> Set it down the exact same place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They look great. All right, so we've got our prime rib. We're gonna go ahead and start carving it. Everybody is ready. They're hungry. They're tired of smelling it. They want to taste it, I think. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, let me uh, move this. And what I'm gonna do, Steve, 
Will you move this foil right there? Just just slide it right there when I go to pick this guy up. Okay, just slide it over. Right there, there you go. All right. Was I in the video? Yep, you were in the video, yes. You might be. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll mail your royalties to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, you guys are really quiet now, huh? <laughs> you don't have to be quiet, silent. If only the people in the concert was this quiet. Man. Mm -hmm. You're responsible for yourself. Yes, you are. Oh, I already pulled that one, didn't I? I will never be responsible for you. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, my God. Oh, All right. Oh, my God. Great. Wow. That's just right. These things are really stuck there. All right. So there's our roast, and then this is our ribs, which I'm saving because those are delicious. Oh, are you saving those right for there. you? Well, you can certainly <laughs> devour them if you'd like. I, I don't, I I don't think you're going to have enough room in your stomach for those. I really would like to have a rib. Oh, well, I'll cut you one. Like yeah. one too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no problem. I mean, I, I'd like that. It is prime rib. Well, I, yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Does anybody want an end cut? Yes. You want an end cut? With a rib. I do With too. a rib, okay. I do too. Come on over, Bob. Is that rare? No. No, the end is not red. Okay, the I don't end know. Is he wants he wants the middle. He wants it just bleeding. I want a red. But I'll take. Do you want the end or not? But okay. he does. No, I want I'm the. I'm not end. sure what the end. You want the end. I want. All right, the well end. come yeah. over here. The end is a yep. lot, is, is cooked yeah. more. All right, let's see how this does. It's cut nice. Oh wow! Wow, that looks beautiful. Oh, yeah, man. Man. How's that look? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You see it, babe? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I want that. All right. Yeah, bring, bring All right. That. And you want a rib too? Yeah, I would like a rib. All right. Yeah. I'm going to give you the, the side that you're. Right uh, now, I'm having I have to hold both hands. <laughs> that's a, that is a piece oh. of meat. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, bud. That All right. awesome. There you go. All right. Bob wants a rib too. Please. And they cut a, and a cut. Yeah, I want a rib there. Yep. All right. So here's your rib. Look at and you want one of these right here? I like it. Oh, ow. Don't give oh, no. too many more Look. knives. Look. Oh. That's who you're liking? Yeah, you Karen, you and I need to share this, probably. <laughs> no, Here, I'm we'll cut you one. Okay, yeah. so we'll yeah. cut oh, this one a little bit. Wow. Yeah, I'll split it with yeah. you, Karen. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm not sharing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sharing. There you go. Ooh, thank you. Have it. Enjoy it. No. All right, just a thin one. A thin one? Well, yeah. How about that? Beautiful. No, a little more this way. <laughs> about like right there. Okay. Because only because it's a lot of meat. Okay. Oh, it's yummy. Thank you, kind sir. No problem. Wow. I forgot my uh you want a nice thick cut? Thanks. Wow. Whatever you got. Paid to order. Wow. There you go. All right. There are two boards down there. If there are enough plates. Uh, they're right on the line. Right on the line, right there. Okay. Yeah. You sit where? No, you sit wherever you want to sit. Well, you got a nice fat section right there. Look at that. So this is going to be the official review. You guys are the customers. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? <laughs> oh, yeah. We love it. Did it turn out okay? Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Wow. Seems like everybody's liking it. I'm not hearing any uh, booze out here. Hey, no booze. <laughs> it's Maybe all the good. best you've ever done. Awesome. Every chance that I get to do it is a learning experience. Keep learning. I'm always learning and trying. I got mine right here. It's good. It tastes, it tastes great. How's the filet, babe? I haven't tried it yet. It looks pretty good. It looks great. All right. They have not tried the desserts yet. Hopefully those are going to go over well, too, if they have enough room in their stomach later. <laughs> All right, this has been a great day cooking for everybody. I've enjoyed it. This is probably the biggest group that I've cooked for at Thank once. You, Thank you much. Thank you, Adam. You're very welcome. I'm glad you guys enjoy it. We're going to continue out and have our dinner and uh, have a good time here at the State Park.